Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the Innovation Hub Fab Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to operate our laser cutters. Our laser cutters are one of our most used tools. You can make so many different kinds of things with them. You're not limited to creating flat objects like coasters or name tags. You can create 3D actual functional parts that do things. And that's really, really cool. You can approximate curves if you do a bunch of little slices and lay them around a corner. You can make nice little boxes and things. You can make gears. You can make clocks. You can make architectural models of Parisian things. You can certainly engrave and cut out trophies and awards and all sorts of awesome things. There are a few things that you need to know so that you can operate these safely and efficiently. Each of our lasers has a dedicated computer hooked up to it. These computers are meant to just run the laser. They're not meant to do any sort of design or anything. That way we don't have people sitting there designing when someone needs to run a print job. Now operating the actual laser is fairly simple. Setting up your part inside the software is kind of where people typically get stuck. We use Adobe Illustrator because these things operate just like a printer. Illustrator gives us a lot of design flexibility to do pretty much whatever we want. Because remember, we're only working in two dimensions here. So there's no CAD required. Although you can certainly take a CAD file and save it as an Illustrator file to use in here. This thing will print just like a printer. It'll do PDFs, Word documents, pretty much anything that you can send to a standard printer. However, we like to use Illustrator files because of the flexibility that it provides us. These machines understand color and stroke or line width. If you want to cut something, and it says so here on the front of the checklist, cuts need to be in RGB mode, full red, 25500, or in hex, FF00000. Maybe that's one too many zeros. Anyway, it's two Fs and then four zeros. You need to make sure that your document color mode in Illustrator is set to RGB. So make sure you go to File, Document, Color Mode, and change it to RGB. Now the templates we have already set up here on the desktop are set up correctly. The size of our laser beds is 32 inches wide by 18 inches deep, and they are 150 watts. And it'll cut through up to about half inch wood without too much charring. We can go up to 3 quarter inch thick, but um, it gets pretty toasty on the edge because the laser simply is just focused light. It just burns through. That's how it operates. It just sets it on fire really quick and vaporizes the stuff. And it can do pretty much anything except cut metal. Now we can etch metal and glass and things like that, but we cannot cut it. You simply have to have a lot more power on a laser to be able to cut metal. So set your artboard to 32 by 18. You need to make sure that your document color mode in Illustrator is set to RGB. I'm going to show you how to make a simple coaster. And the same techniques apply to any project. I'll make a circle. And then I'm going to size it so that it's 4x4. Four four. That should be a good coaster size. Now I'll type something that will be engraved on it. Of course I want everyone to know whose coaster this is. And then I'll align it so it looks pretty. And now I need to change this circle so that it gets cut out. I need to change the stroke or line width to 0 .001001 points, not inches. Make sure the units are in points, and you can type PT or points to make sure. I will go up here and hold Shift while I click on this stroke icon. I'll make sure that it's in RGB mode, and then set it to full red. I also need to make sure this shape has no fill by clicking on fill and choosing the red spare symbol. Then I'm ready to print. File, print, setup, preferences. And this will bring up the laser UCP control panel. I'll select my material from the list, which is natural, wood, medium, birch. I'll use my calipers to measure the thickness of the wood so that the laser knows what to do then I'll type that measurement in here. Click on the super speed checkbox if it has one. This makes the engraved areas go twice as fast because it engraves two lines at once. We typically switch the print direction to up, but sometimes it won't let you. Make sure the fixture type is none. Apply, OK, print, print again. Now the laser control panel pops up. Now you position your part in the upper left corner typically. 
You can click on the arrows over here to move your artwork around. And you can click on one of these anchor points. And now you can see where that point is over here on the right. You could also type in numbers here to set your artwork to a specific spot. I'll move this up over here. But we never go to zero, zero, because that never seems to work for some reason. So we'll leave a minimum of one eighth of an inch. If you see red lines over here, it means those are cuts. And now if you're expecting cuts, but you don't see red lines, then something is wrong with your document. Go back and check that it's red 255 and point 001 points, then send it to the printer again. Our lasers have a checklist on the front. You need to make sure that the exhaust fan is on Make sure that the air is turned on, because air assist is required to kind of help blow away some of the particles while the laser is firing. Check the chart of unacceptable materials and make sure your item is not on the list. Check that the cutting table is at the back left corner against the rulers. Now you insert your material into the laser, typically in the upper left corner. Then you close the lid and press play. The laser goes back and forth to etch your part. Now this has been sped up a bit because it's rather slow. It can take a full hour if you're doing a whole sheet. Then it cranks up the power and makes the cuts. Then you pop it out and enjoy your awesome new thing. Now of course with any of this stuff, if you're at all confused, definitely ask. You will not look stupid for asking. Well that's pretty much all there is to actually operating these lasers. They're pretty simple once you get the hang of it and Gosh, it's an awful lot of fun. They can do so many things. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay updated with all the awesome stuff we've got going on around here all the time. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the Innovation Hub Fab Lab. And what do you want to make?